Outside zone could be one of the most effective concepts in football, but it depends on how you teach it. Fundamentally, this has the same rules as inside zone, but the aiming point for both the offensive line and the running back changes. Let's jump into the diagram so we can walk through what this actually looks like from a big picture perspective. All right, guys, so let's take a look at outside zone here. We're going to run to the left. You can run this in whatever direction you want. We're going to go through it versus a four-man front, which is what we have here. But we're also going to go and look at it from a three-man front as well. So what we're going to have with covered, uncovered rules, we got a covered guy here. He's going to be covered, right? We're not going to talk about the covered, uncovered rules because I did that in the inside zone video. So if you want a more in-depth understanding of that, then go ahead and check that out. But you're going to end up with two uncovereds here and then we have three three covered okay if the y was on the ball he would technically be uncovered as well so what you do as a covered or uncovered player that is going to dictate how this really plays out so let's assume that we want to help with our play side okay if you're uncovered you help play side so what that looks like here we're stepping here because we're covered we're taking these guys we're trying to reach them if we can't reach them we'll just drive them out right we'll just drive them out but if we can reach them we want to having the y or the fullback here that's going to help he can run through and go up and take the most dangerous that's going to ensure that we're able to actually reach this defensive end so that's a quite easy read for the running back here right we have to try and reach this tackle this three tech uncovered we're going to step play side right to make sure that this guy doesn't crash inside here if he does and they just swap responsibilities and then the the guard would be the one who climbs but right now we're going to say he steps okay he's trying to reach out here we check now we climb up and take the mic who's going to be flowing over the top we can cut off this backside and then what we do here is really dependent on how you want to handle this as a play caller or play designer if the will is going to be outside of the defensive end and is more dangerous then why not just take the defensive end right why have him step inside if there's nobody to block right he's not going to get to this safety we already have people for this safety we have a receiver who who can block him i'd say hey let's take this and let's guarantee the cutback right so i don't want to have this here i want to guarantee this cutback is there because we've blocked this defensive end so if for some reason we can't reach this defensive end and we end up cutting it all the way back we at least have that covered now how do you handle this from a receiver's perspective who is the most dangerous out of these two realistically this guy's closer especially if he's here and then what you could do is you could have him run off the corner if there's a press situation what i like to do even if there's a press is i'm just gonna say i want you to be very violent and attack this guy just one shot right just give me one really good violent shot and then go get the safety if the corner's playing off we can step vertical and go get the safety if the safety is really really aggressive then we just go get him immediately right but corners don't know how to tackle right and, and i'm going to assume that they don't know how to tackle until they prove to me that they can tackle if this guy becomes more dangerous than this guy then we'll block the corner right but most of the time nine times out of ten or actually probably like 99 times out of 100 this guy is the more dangerous one so we want to make sure that we handle that slot receivers in here working with this as well so full blocking scheme let's walk through the whole thing again all right we're checking here working up cut off this backside nose we can take this end we want to run through this defensive end go pick up a sam and then we leave the two worst tacklers to make the play okay that's the idea behind this play now let's go ahead and break this down from a three-man front right this is where things get a little bit interesting what we have here is we got i drew this in a, in a strange way here but we got a corner playing off all right we're, we're expecting this is going to be this is like a pre-snap they're showing kind of a too high look with these guys but they're they're already rolling right they're already pre-rolled he's going to be down here he's going to be taking this and then we're going to have a one high safety look middle field closed right so that's what we're looking at right in this situation so essentially if he's slanting here kind of becomes this over front in this way so let's go ahead and talk about how we would handle this right how are we going to block this so what we're going to do is and i'm going to show you a problem that occurs first and then i'll show you the actual solution for that problem so what you could do is you could say let's block it like this right these two take these two these two take these two and we work in here for this mic so let me draw that out for you so you see what i'm talking about we say hey we're going to be able to take this 
And let's take this here. Center, we want him to pass this nose off to this backside guard. And then I want you to go reach this will. We want to go and try and get this mic. We leave the backside defensive end. And now we have an extra guy to block this and block this. And now we're golden. Or maybe he comes up here and blocks this safety, right? And now the corner's left unblocked. But this looks really nice on paper, right? This looks really, really nice on paper. But realistically, this just doesn't happen, okay? Because the center is never going to get there. Tackle is never going to get there. Like th these are these are difficult blocks, especially for the center here. It's just not going to happen. So how can we fix this problem? So instead of working these two to these two, what you can do is say these two to these two, right? So this is kind of running outside zone, but with man principles behind it, right? Because we're not really reaching and taking whatever shows up like you would do in a traditional outside zone. So what ends up happening is we run through this, we let him guarantee that the, the nose will be taken by the guard, right? And then we come up and get this backside mic. Same thing here, we wanna make sure we take this defensive end. Uh, same thing in the last situation here. Now what we want is the same idea. Run through this guy here, come and take this will. Now that leaves the tough block here on the Y. So essentially you're either gonna reach him or you're gonna kick him out. And that really depends on, on where he's at. If he's at the line of scrimmage, well that's supposed to be a J here, then we can attack and we can try to kick out and then we're cutting inside. The running back has to read this block either way. Right, that's gonna be the thing that we have to read. And now if you do this, the problem that could occur is this guy shooting this gap, right? That can happen. Now what you have to have is you have to have an understanding that while you're looking to take this block, this is the leverage that we want, this can be an issue. He could just get nice tackles for loss, but you just easily solve that problem by making sure that our eyes are looking in the right spot. So as we're trying to reach here, we're getting a feel for this right here. And as we're stepping through, we're getting a feel for this. We wanna have our eyes here. So this just becomes, hey, if he shoots, guard, just fall back and take that. Now we're gonna have this defensive end reached. What we wanna do, when we say we wanna reach, we wanna have the defender on this side and the offensive lineman on this side, right? That's the angle that we wanna be. So our butt is facing this direction, right? These are our shoulders, right, in this angle. So we're blocking him here. That's when we know we've got this guy reached. He's already pre-reached, okay, based on the pre-snap alignment. So this will be easy, right, to adjust and just take this and take this. He shoots in here, great. Now we're golden, right? Now we just work outside. Now the next problem, this guy, right? If he's more aggressive, let's say he stands at the line of scrimmage and he jumps in here. Either we're gonna reach him or we're kicking him out, but either way, we're gonna have to read off of this. Now, how is the X meant to get all the way in here and make this block? Well, it's gonna be difficult, right? It's gonna be difficult. So what you can do is instead of blocking him, you could run a glance or something like that, right? We're gonna run out, you see this all the time, run outside zone here. We just read this defender. Depends on how aggressive he is. We are either gonna give or we're gonna pull and fire this glance right behind him. So he jumps down, great, we'll take it. Okay, and you tell this guy, hey, when you make this break, we're not breaking to a specific spot. You break wherever you need to break. You're, you're running to daylight, like that's all it is. Run to daylight, find it. Or we can have this guy pre-snap line up a little bit tighter, so he's automatically in here. And again, you can do the same thing. You can have the pre-snap tighter alignment and run the glance as well, but this way, even if he's tighter to the line of scrimmage and he's here, we can still pick this up because we're close enough to him, right? We close this distance between the two of them and we don't care about the corner, right? Who cares, right? He's, he's not making the tackle anyways. And if he does, he's gonna get run over at four yards, three yards, right? We'll, we'll fall forward and we'll get our four yard gain, our five yard gain, we'll take that. But most likely we're gonna be able to make that guy miss or we're gonna run through him and just give him a long day and then we'll just keep doing it over and over, right? That's the, that's the game that we wanna play with this. Now that we understand the rules, let's actually dive into the film so we can see what this looks like on the field. All right, so let's take a look at how they're gonna run this outside zone. And as we can see in this example here, okay, this is a pretty well-blocked play. Now let's take a look at how they actually do it, right? So what they're doing is they're hitting this combination. They're not working up. They're not asking this guard to go get this backer play side. He's not gonna get there. This guy's too fast, right? So what they say is, hey, we're just gonna work to the backside guy. Same deal here. 
All right, we're working here, getting to this backside, guys. So they just run right to us, right? That's the idea behind it. And now what you could do with this is you could have him just take this defensive end or have him take this faster guy here if you want. They end up having him just try and chase and get this backside guy either way. And now we have two problems here play side. How do we handle these two problems? Well, they've got a fullback in here. So this is a pretty cool way of doing it. They're going to have this be the normal reach step, right? If he's outside, we'll probably just end up kicking this guy out. And this is more of an insert outside zone, right? So this is kind of an ISO type of play for outside zone. So they do it with the pitch as well, which is a really cool idea because essentially you're getting the running back, the ball with a ton of space. He's catching it now eight yards back in the backfield. So he's got a ton of vision here. We end up kicking this guy out here, taking good leverage. All right now we're able to get a double team up and try and take this guy here. We cut right back behind it and off we go running. So let's go ahead and take a look at this play one more time in slow motion here. So notice we kick out this defensive end, good cut by the running back, cuts it north again, and essentially we hit the backside A gap there, or the playside A gap there for a nice run. All right, now here's another variation I wanna show you. So this, we're gonna actually try and reach this Mike, who's playside here. That means that we're gonna to have to be here and trying to reach this backer here. All right, now we've got two for two, so theoretically we should be able to just do this and block these guys here. All right, on the back side, you could step in and try and climb for a safety, or you can just make sure that we take this backer here. So let's go ahead and watch what they do. And this is the problem that I always have with offensive linemen trying to reach backers who are play side. Look at this. He's just shooting this gap here and just causes a lot of problems uh, for our offensive line. Now we are able to, if you look at the play side double team here, we are able to actually work up to this backer here and kick him out. Now we've gotta be able to cut this inside here, but we end up losing this battle on the backside and this is gonna completely screw up the play. Makes a good move here. But realistically, if we can pick this up, let's take a look at the backside here. This is also a tough block to be able to make, trying to reach this guy without much help from him. All he's doing is just putting a hand out, right? He's not running through him and working up to anybody backside. Now this is the way that this front is set up. This is the way that you have to do it. All right, but this, you could technically cut this guy on the backside here if you want to. This would still be a problem here. So that's the issue that could occur on, on outside zone here. Now let's talk about the solution for this guy who is actually just flying in. If you know you're gonna get a guy who does that, instead of having this guy start off by keeping his hand here he just takes off to where this guy is gonna be right and we cut this right then we don't have to worry at all about our backside and we are just getting purely lateral all right purely lateral to start here and now we can try and maybe we even have to cut this guy as well right but this is quite tough to ask a guard to do i mean this is this is the nfl these are the best of the best doing it and they're still struggling with these little details here so this isn't an easy task while i while i sit here behind my computer and explain it it's not as easy as i uh, make it sound here but let's go ahead and look at this one more time full speed so you can see the full thing play out so as you can see there's a few different ways we can block the outside zone to have success with the play as with so many other things in the game there's no one size fits all solution with any concept so hopefully you guys got some good information from this video here let me know in the comments what other concepts you'd like me to break down and if you really want to go overboard and totally nerd out about football go ahead and take a look at my 90 day OC course. There's gonna be a link for that below in the description, but that's it for this one. I'll see you guys in the next one.